old business referencing the Department of Revenue Administration and the request for funds. I would suggest that in the future, a phone call to Steve Hamilton up at DRA might be helpful. Um, the DRA uh, response dated June 24th uh, to the uh, inquiry, uh, the request from the Board of Selectmen and the uh, uh, challenge from the Budget Committee uh, is as follows. Dear Chairman Griffin, the request for the approval of a transfer of funds from the unreserved fund balance to the Town of Hampton General Fund in the amount of 352241 has been received by the Department of Revenue. There is no statutory provision for such a transfer to be made. There is a process to request an overexpenditure of the total 2015 appropriation made pursuant to RSA 32 colon 11. Accordingly, the Department of Revenue Municipal Bureau's record, according to the Municipal Bureau's records, the Town of Hampton's total 2015 voted appropriation is 30,133,341 as adjusted. The Bureau could interpret your request as an overexpenditure request, although it appears to mistakenly rely upon the process under RSA 32 colon 11 Roman 2. That provision is a retrospective remedy ap applicable when by some sudden or unexpected emergency, the total voted appropriation in Hampton's case 30,133,341 has already been exceeded. The proper procedures for a prospective overexpenditure is defined in RSA 32 colon 11 Roman 1. Expenditure of appropriations as voted are regulated by statute, RSA 32 colon 10. Significant authority rests with the selectmen in the ability to transfer appropriations to meet changeable conditions. Neither the Budget Committee nor other citizens shall have any authority to challenge the discretion of the governing body in making such transfers. Based on the information provided with the request, it appears that the individual line item transfers have been made. These types of transfers allow for the regular operation of the town's departments, including the Department of Public Works for the immediate future. And by the way, that, I believe, was a result of a court case brought by uh, former Fire Chief Sullivan, uh, Tom Gillick uh, of the Planning Board, and Sandy Buck, challenging the selectmen's failure to uh, keep four fire positions in the 2005 budget and they were ruled against, which uh, gave the selectmen the authority basically to spend the budget as they needed. The sheet attached to your request appears to show amounts in a column titled 2015. It's assumed that this is the amount of actual year-to-date expenditures. It's unclear from the spreadsheet what relationship these have to the amounts that were budgeted. The spreadsheet shows some individual amounts exceed the amount shown in the column titled 2013. While that may be of interest, there is nothing to show that the total 2015 voting voted appropriation has been exceeded. Based on the information you have provided, the request is denied for the following reasons. There is no statutory procedure to request approval of transfer of funds from unreserved fund balance to the general fund to meet individual line item expenditures. Other than the direct procedures and purposes outlined in RSA 32 colon 11, there is no process to request approval of additional expenditures beyond the total 2015 voted appropriation. No overexpenditure of the total 2015 voted appropriation has occurred to date that would trigger the use of RSA 32 colon 11 Roman 2 and the provisions of RSA 32 colon 11 Roman 1 have not been properly followed. The following is non-binding technical advice provided pursuant to RSA 21 J colon 24. When unusual circumstances arise, an analysis can be completed by the town to determine if and by what amount the total vote, voted appropriation will be exceeded. At that time, the request for authority to overspend the total voted appropriation by a certain amount may be forwarded to the Bureau for consideration and the process will need to follow the procedures contained within RSA 32 colon 11 Roman 1, including review and approval in writing by a majority of the Municipal Budget Committee. Assistance for those requests is, is at, and he gave the, uh, uh, the address where you can go online. Um, I, I think it would save us a lot of time and effort 
if we perhaps checked, especially in something regarding the Department of Revenue Administration, if we checked with them at first, I will say that uh, Steve Hamilton did a great job uh, specifically uh, helping out. I, what he's saying essentially is that if we have a legal judgment that forces us to overexpend the budget, which is why we have that extra five million whatever sitting there, um, <coughs> that is the occasion where we would apply. Mr. Chairman. Okay, here, one moment. I would like to say Mrs. Wolseley has uh, made an assertion that there were no phone calls made. Am I correct in understanding that I didn't. there were? Yes, that's what you said. I didn't say. I said well, that's what you nice said. You suggested that there be phone calls yes, made. Yes, I didn't I like say there were none to made. You that there were phone calls. That's made. all right. That's good. That's what I would like. You made that suggestion. Yes. And is that not what was done, Mr. Welch? There were phone calls made. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And, and may I say, Mr. Chairman, yes. that uh, <clears throat> analysis of Mr. Uh, Hamilton's letter mm -hmm. indicates <sighs> that it is not possible for the town to ever apply to use surplus. And the reason for that is that the $30 million appropriation includes all warrant articles. Mm -hmm. We specifically talked about that for about a half an hour on the phone. And his assertion was until every penny mm -hmm. that is in the budget is spent or can be ratified as spent because contracts are out for that mm -hmm. and the money is gone, yeah. until then, no one may apply for any use of transfer funds, which means in this state that no one can apply for the use of transferred funds because no one can spend the entire budget plus all warrant articles yeah. on a guarantee. So, quite frankly, having done this <laughs> several times with the Department of Revenue in the past and other commissioners, uh, I have to tell you, I don't think they know what they're talking about. Well, and that's that's from the statute, not from, from Mr. Uh, Hamilton. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to make a comment. Yes, please do. That we all had that memo. We all read that memo. And I don't feel the really need to have it read to me again and to be lectured on somebody's interpretation of it in the, in the meeting. I think we all had it. We all, we all read it. We all maybe, you know, can talk about it in the meeting. But I, I don't need a lecture on the uh, interpretation of it and how I should interpret it or how it should be interpreted. There's it many interpretations of laws. I just wanted to make that comment. And that's why he's there to be a tool for this board to use. Mr. Bridal. All set, thank you. Mr. Bean. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Welch for his initiative in uh, pursuing this with uh, the state of New Hampshire. Uh, and uh, your letter, when we could read your letter, uh, is uh, especially cogent. Uh, unless you are on Mars, uh, it was the worst weather uh, in history in New Hampshire. And uh, that's an extraordinary event. Uh, the state of uh, New Hampshire uh, sucks $200 million a year out of this very town. And if you will look at the financials tonight from Director Polmium, there is not one dime of shared revenue on that line. There never has, or there hasn't been recently during my tenure. It's not going to happen this year. These people in Concord can't balance a budget. They can't work together. We have had Director Rose from another department at this state uh, sandbag us on testimony with Next Taylor that has cost this town seven figures. Uh, we could get an attorney and we could challenge this other director that sits in Concord on how to run our town, but we're not doing that. And I would also like to thank uh, Chairman Latimer in her letter to the Budget Committee. And these are rational people uh, trying to run a town in a, uh, a savage winter that savaged the budget, and we may be able to patch it and mend it, but we've got infrastructure falling apart, we've got union contracts, we've got people that live in this town that have to travel on these roads. But this going to the Wizard of Oz in Concord and getting these letters back that are open to interpretation, I, I would maintain that uh, Chairman Latimer, that you, Chairman Griffin, and that Mr. Welch have acted as uh, gentle people, and you've acted professionally, and you've come communicated with these folks and quite frankly uh, I don't see an adversarial position and I think the lines of communication that Mr. Welch exploited were sufficient in that he was doing his job and the vote was four to one. Naturally Selectman Woolsey and rightfully so is, is the dissenting vote on that and uh, she has further added her comment tonight but uh, there were no bad guys in this, there were no problems, there were no mistakes. This was just following the rule of law. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Wizard of Oz can Moving stop you from doing business. what you want to do.